Are we doing this or not? Hello and welcome. Um, it's been a while since I posted any type of video on this channel, but I'm. We we've been we've been all over the place literally, and um, we finally finally found a place where to stay for a while. We've been traveling a lot and uh, it's, um, it's challenging. Um, so today, today's video is gonna be like me talking uh, about one of my favorite hobbies, uh, which is knitting. And uh, there is some background noise. I know, I'm aware, Mika is working uh, on his uh, working bench, woodworking bench, so it's planing a huge piece of wood and he wants to do it. There is a beautiful day I wanted to record, otherwise um, it's going to be too much, too many things stacking up and stuff. Um, I'm drinking from this cute mug. Um, it's very cute because it has this kind of wild flowers and that's what we're here for, wildness. Um, so, before we start, I want to say that from at least this year, I don't know, next years and so on, but I decided to divide the channel in different parts. Uh, so, I'll do i want to do a 12 months challenge um i don't want to call it challenge because it's not i don't want it i don't want it to be a challenge but kind of a, a learning journey um 12 months i want to uh, make 12 patterns and probably more once a month one pattern a month uh, so this channel is going to be about Knitting, uh, wild food, wild plants, foraging, woodworking, and finding our home. So all of these things mixed together. So we will have a podcast about knitting. So this type of format, I'm just going to be sitting here talking to you about my project, my progresses, my learning process and so on. Um, and then we will have videos that are more dynamic, like us going to find their place, checking for houses, hunting for houses. Can you say that? I don't think so. But anyway, because that's our dream to find a place, a land where we can settle and create beautiful projects and in harmony with nature around us. Um, so that would be another type of format, so we like knitting and more like finding our home type of videos and then we will have uh, probably like how-to recipes, foraging, kind of more how-to kind of style video. We'll have hopefully two videos per week, but I can't promise that yet, but I'll do my best. So two videos per week. One would be probably about knitting, maybe, um, if I can do it. Another one would be more about between, you know, how to recipes and us going to check uh, different houses and find our place. I hope you got it. How much did I... Six minutes just to say that, but that's good. Yeah, the knitting podcast, we'll have to find a name for it. So... Yeah, let's start with the first part of the video. I, this is gonna be wild, it's gonna be uh, chaotic. That's unfortunately, or fortunately, depends uh, what I, what I can, that's, that's me. <laughs> um, but I'll improve and the sound, I promise, will improve as well. Um, things are coming together, right? I'm drinking a really nice coffee to wake me up a bit. 
So you have a pile of things here stacking. Okay, so um, the first part of this um, little episode uh, is gonna be about looking back at the past year and like my knitting kind of experience, how it went and how it improved and, and so on. So I have been knitting for about four or five years on and off. Uh, so it's been maybe in the winter I was knitting sometimes the past years, uh, making some hats, you know, nothing really special. And I never used a pattern. I The first pattern I kind of followed um, from scratch was um, a Jessie made uh, pattern, um, the Ripple Bralette. I have it here. This is not my first one, but that this is the, basically the design. Um, this, I made it a bit longer. And this is in a blend of linen and cotton. And I use it so much in the summer. But anyway, so that was my first pattern and I uh, made it. And I made several of those ripple bralettes. I didn't like so much defeating the colors. I didn't really know about gauging, you know, uh, understanding what type of needles and what type of uh, the weight the, this, the yarn should be and so on. So I kind of messed it up a bit and I knitted two or three, but then I gifted them because maybe they were either too small or too big for me. So anyway, this um, spring 2021, I knitted this one because I really wanted to knit one in this beautiful color, which is one of my favorite is this kind of acorn brown. Um, and it's not perfect, this is the back. It's not perfect at all, but uh, I used it a lot. However, the fabric, um, I didn't care for it so well. I would just use it and then just put it, throw it in the washing machine. So it kind of stiffen up. Can you say that? Um, so I would like to knit another one. But that was the only the pat the 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 only pattern I made for the first part of two thousand twenty one, and then uh, this summer towards the end of the summer it was actually autumn, uh, but I, we were living in Portugal, and I got my knitting mojo back. I wanted to uh, have some jumpers, knit some jumper. Um, because I've done it once. I knit once uh, one jumper that I have, where is it? Here. So this is my first knitted <laughs> jumper and is huge. This was for Mika. Uh, now I'm using it as a kind of a dress and I can insert some footage of me wearing it. Um, it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice jumper for, you know, a big person like me, <laughs> uh, but for me, no. I made it actually for him and I follow just, I think, some YouTube tutorials here and there, but then I just, you know, went completely wide and did it myself. And it's not perfect at all, uh, but it's, I like the fact that I kind of went straight into color work instead of just using a plain color. Um, so, yeah, and I knitted in Sweden uh, a year ago, about a year ago. So this was the only jumper I had. I made another one for me with the scrap of the same yarn. It was really cropped and I didn't really like it so much, I still have it, but I wanted to, uh, I didn't have, we were moving, right, across Europe and so on, I didn't have uh, jumpers, I had one, I had two jumpers, one was a, actually a, a cardigan, another one was a pullover, and they weren't even wool, or I think they were just acrylic and, you know, like a sweater kind of material. Um, cotton based 
so I wanted to knit a jumper and I decided to follow a tutorial and go on Skillshare. I went on Skillshare and I typed how to knit a sweater and I followed this beautiful course, very simple but very well explained and we knitted together the uh, everyday raglan <laughs> but I didn't have, I didn't buy any yarn I had some stash, like a small bag, you know, a small basket full of yarns and they were just like small skeins and scrap yarns so I was like I'm gonna see the ones that look pretty much the same weight like DK I think this is probably um, yeah and and just try it and I got gauge with the crazy yarn that I had um, then so <laughs> this is the jumper I have to say that I love it um, but it doesn't look elegant it doesn't look it's a very special jumper it reminds me of a beautiful time and a beautiful knitting experience that I had while I was knitting it and um, I love it and I'm gonna wear it a lot I'm still I'm wearing it a lot especially when I go out foraging in the garden that I have to be you know in the middle of, of things uh, and I don't have to look particularly you know graceful or elegant but this is the <laughs> this is the jumper and it's perfect it fits perfectly it's a bit you know wide uh, but I like that so there aren't any decreases um, or waist shaping and then I <laughs> <laughs> embroidered or whatever you call it those type of small designs but so these are all scrap yarns that I had already uh, the main color which is this one uh, was from a cone that my mom gave me and, and it was pure wool and she's been having it for I don't know 10 12 years so I really liked the color this kind of tweed green it was beautiful it's very beautiful it has bits of like brown and very light green it's beautiful but you know it's what I think I would have done differently is to not put the this red. This red is it just doesn't doesn't look nice. So I that's the only thing that I would have would change. The rest I really love it, and uh, it's not elegant. It's not nothing really special. But I consider it my first real garment. I really understood how a, uh, a sweater is constructed, at, at least a raglan. Uh, this was a raglan sweater. And the pattern is called everyday raglan and uh, I love this construction like from top down. Um, I love this uh, yeah, raglan construction. I love it. I love it and this I really cherish it and use it a lot uh, even if it looks a bit you know hippie or whatever <laughs> whatever you want to call that style i i love it so that was my first real sweater for me um and i made it in probably like a week and when I was knitting it, I had the beautiful, we were planning what to do next in our life. We were like getting a lot of inspiration from documentaries, people that we would meet around. Um, so we were really like setting up a kind of uh, the next processes of our life, if that makes sense. And I was knitting uh, while we were doing that. So this jumper really, has a lot of a, lo a lot of hope, inspiration, and joy in every stitch, or almost, yeah, in many stitches. Um, 
so I'm really really happy for this um, yes so then uh, it was we were in Portugal it was October and it was fairly warm there um, but I still wanted to uh, improve my knitting skills and do some color work so I saw this beautiful uh, sweater by Jennifer Steingas um, the name is Tresta which means trust and I really like that and I saw the olive tree and, and the moon cat um, is her name the woman behind that blog and she made this sweater um, with a special yarn from Portugal from Ros uh, Rosa Pomar um, and this is the yarn Beiroa I think it's called and there are different colors and this color work is so beautiful in my opinion I didn't come up with these colors I just copied what she did and I loved it I knitted it in six seven days it was really beautiful and yes it's really warm and nice I love that this yarn is not um, even it's really I love it it's a beautiful yarn I ate some biscuits that I made. This is the situation. I'm sorry. I shouldn't put my garments on the floor. <sighs> All right. So I, let me put this thing down. The landlord came, the battery ran out. This is life. So, what was I saying? I don't remember. Maybe I should watch the recap. But I can't be bothered. Can't be bothered. So, more or less, we're talking about the things that I would like to knit. But I already bought some patterns throughout this year and I want to knit those patterns first. I want to be able to knit them maybe once or twice with the different type of yarns and do some modifications, make them small, short, long sleeves, you know, and that'll do. Uh, so there are patterns that I really would like to um, buy but I'll probably do it later on in the year and one of them is the Braids of Grass by Albiona Mec 
McLaughlin, um, um, I'll put the name here. Uh, braids of grass, it's a beautiful pattern. It has these beautiful braids and it's a stocking it uh, kind of uh, top down design. And um, another one is the Sulalu, Sulalu sweater by Jenna K. Those two are the ones that I want to make later on uh, in the year. This mood board that I create is not really a, something, anything special. It's just the images of the different patterns that I want to, you know, uh, learn and, and create and knit throughout the year. I really consider the things that I could, I really kind of need and I really want to learn to make. Um, and some of them are summer pattern or like spring, you know, summer, autumn niche pattern. And some of them are more like winter based pattern. For the first three months, I'll focus on knitting warmer garments, warmer in the sense garments that will make me warm. Um, so kind of pullover, you know, wool based patterns and from spring to summer, going through summer and so on, I'll knit um, more summery type of garments. So the one that I already purchased are these ones. So three of them I already I have whips and one finish object, one is the Felix cardigan, uh, another one is the ranunculus and the other one is the golden fern. These ones are working in progress projects. I hope this rambling makes sense. Uh, I recorded more than an hour of me talking and just rambling and I felt a little bit stressed because there was a lot that I wanted to say and I tried to kind of be efficient but at the same time you know me <laughs> and uh, so I don't know if this video will be interesting for any of you but I hope it will and it will give you a bit of inspiration there is another project that I would like to start very soon. The one I'm working right now is the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Maid uh, in this yarn that I just mentioned. This is the Yarn Home. It's by Yarn Home. The company is called Yarn Home and it's this uh, alpaca and wool undyed yarn. It's beautiful. Not so good yarn. Um, so this pattern is really well written. Jessie made it's just an amazing designer. She's designing really size inclusive patterns. She's giving the option buy what you can kind of or what you can afford with different kind of like type of prices, different discounts for different people and um, I really like it and I'm not sure like I want to knit a lot more of the same pattern a lot of ripple bralettes um, so and I'm not sure I wanted to have like wool ripple bralettes but I think it's really nice to have at least one to have as an undergarment um, for the winter to kind of keep me warm um, but we'll see and there is another pattern because my uh, my values are really connected to um, respecting they're all about respecting the environment the products and the people and the animals and I feel I feel a little bit I don't think the wool is my favorite type of fabric not because it's not good but because of the practices connected to wool 
uh, animals are maybe not really well treated all the time and I would like to not contribute to that um, so I'm trying to shift into I want to use all my stash and almost not buy any more wool if I can I have to buy three more skeins to finish the um, the ranunculus that I'm uh, that I'm uh, knitting here uh, but those I hope will be kind of I don't know if they will be the last skeins but I would like to shift into a more plant based fiber but I know that plant based fibers are not the warmest right they're more like cooling and giving strength uh, but for example I love nettle fiber I love hemp uh, they are amazing fiber they're super strong they produce beautiful garments that are really you know um, antibacterial very strong type of fabric uh, you know they're produce beautiful garments as well but they don't they don't give so much warmth so my idea is to try to either find a, a local shepherd and understand his practices and or her practices or their practices um, on how to you know produce wool uh, or like how to shave the sheep and all of that um, and see if it's really if I can still you know still use wool because it doesn't make me feel a bit ashamed that I'm using an animal based product for my own needs when maybe the animal or while the animal maybe was um, you know exploited that's the word um, so I am trying to be I'm trying to think on that in that line and there is the, always that kind of feeling when I work with wool um, but I want to cherish what I have I want to I'm very grateful for what I got and um, I'll still probably I want to learn for example to span to spin my own fiber and there is actually a shepherd here nearby who has a lot of who has I think not a lot but I think 10 or 16 sheep sheep and uh, he shaved them last year and um, he has so much wool like huge sacks of wool and uh, he doesn't use it he used to give the wool to a building industry a building company uh, and they would use wool to kind of do insulation, I think, on some houses. Um, but I think it's a little bit of a shame because, you know, you can make mattresses, you can make garments, you can make anything with that wool. The only thing is that it's so much and you have to wash it, you know, because it has a lot of a lot of you know hay a lot of uh, dirt a lot of things in stuck in the wool and to wash it is a long process it needs a lot of water yeah it's a little bit of a process to to wash wool especially that much so he said i can give it to you for free i don't need anything i just want to get rid of this wool so that's also something that is really interesting i put that on hold because we were moving and I didn't know what we would do next but now that we are in a place we are renting this apartment maybe I can find ways to wash this wool a little bit of a time at a time it's just that in this house we don't have a fireplace yet we are in the process of buying a small stove a secondhand one maybe with that I could, you know, wash and dry and wash this wool, but it's a little bit, you know, a little bit of a work. Um, so I'm 
that's something that I would like to do in the future, but I would want, I want to kind of shift into use more plant-based fibers because I really love them. I love the garments that come out from plant-based fibers. This ripple bralette is from a from linen, I think it's a maybe it was a blend of linen and cotton, but I believe it was mostly linen. Um, and it's so cooling, it's so nice, it's so strong the fabric. Um, so I would like to use more more plant-based fibers, and I actually bought. Sorry, it's just. <sighs> I bought some cones of linen and hemp from an Italian company uh, so this, these are linen cones the yarn uh, is very fingering weight as you can see it's really thin but if you hold it double with other type of, of yarn like another cotton base or another linen one or you hold it double you know it will it will work so that's something that I want I want to knit the garments with that and I link the company I buy I bought this from and this is hemp it's in Florence yeah it's called Campolo Campolmi Roberto Filati uh, uh, it's a, a company based in Florence and this is hemp so it's a very beautiful, let me see, it's a very beautiful type of fiber. So I want to shift into this type of, um, of fibers, plant-based, because they're strong, they're amazing, and they don't exploit animals when they create those fibers. Most of the time, I think animals or the environment. Um, but we'll see, we have to look into that. I'm sorry for the noise. Mika is sewing a huge piece of wood. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would like to, I would like to shift into a more plant-based uh, knitting, if that makes sense. But I'm not too harsh on myself and I'm I'm trying to learn things and I don't want to be, you know, too strict. So I started this conversation because I think it's very important, but also because I want to say that I want to knit and to use all the yarn I have in my stash, which is not so much. I want to use it all and all the small scraps and skein, like half skeins and small skeins that I have, I want to make a big blanket. Uh, so that project is maybe not so interesting in terms of like unique knitting experience or giving so much, you know, new skills in the knitting world, but I think it's a milestone to knit your own blanket uh, or to have a knitted blanket <clears throat> with all of these different type of wools um, and all of these different type of yarns uh, that are used in different type of projects. So that's something that I want to start and I, I think it will take a while. I want to do it like here and there and I don't really know um, how to do it. I was thinking to just knit some squares, you know, or maybe even crochet, but I would like to knit it, like knit just squares and then sew them together. But if you have any patterns in mind, any idea, I have lots of stash. Um, <clears throat> And I'll show you what I mean with lots of stash. So this is a bag. This is a hat that I've been knitting for Mika. And it's on hold for now. <laughs> but I have lots of, you know, this half or like super small skeins. Um, lots of them, you see. So I want to knit a blanket with all of this and 
use all of the things that I have. This is another bag that I sewn with this beautiful fabric. But I want to finish it. I want to ha add um, a thread to have it in between so it closes like this bag. And, uh, and then maybe to add as well two handles. That's also a project that I want to create along with my Make 12 2022. And uh, so that's it. This episode, I'll try for next time to curate a bit my content in advance and uh, be more uh, efficient, be more clear and like structured and organized. This episode was just like ugh, trying to squeeze things uh, <laughs> in just one video. Um, you know, I wanted to share with you my knitting journey because I think it's really fun. It's something that I've been very interested for a while. I love knitting and uh, I want to share things with you and with people that are interested and hopefully create some sort of conversation or community. That's my dream, but I'm not expecting too much. Um, yeah, but I think it's just nice to talk to a camera and hope for the best. I guess, yeah, but so, yeah, thank you so much for being here, if you lasted until the end, which is, it's a miracle if you did, or oh, it's a, amazing for me, <laughs> uh, thank you so much if you did, and uh, I hope to see you soon, and to connect with you, with some of you, the ones that are interested, whatever, just leave any comments uh, that are a bit kind, be kind, please. Uh, and uh, if you have any idea of what I could knit in with the, my stash, uh, like any blanket pattern, it would be really nice. And um, I hope you will have the most wonderful time from now on. And uh, See you next time. A kiss.